Hey, hey, welcome to Digging Into the Bible. My name is Jim Barnard. This is a production of Tiller Coaching. All right, it's day 46. Look at us go. Um, so good to be with you. We are um, starting chapter 17 today. And, uh, you know, yesterday we saw that there was a, a shift that was happening. And today very much solidifies that shift. So with that, let's just go ahead and dig in to Matthew 17, starting at verse 1. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And the disciples asked him, Then why do the scribes say that, that first Elijah must come? He answered, Elijah does come, and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah already has come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also the Son of Man will certainly suffer at their hands." Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. All right, so this transfiguration is crazy. How about that? Um, uh, you know, first of all, the, I, I said yesterday that, that Jesus was like, hey, he's not going to say, don't tell anyone anymore. Um, this is a little different. You know, the, this is don't tell anyone about this particular vision. But um, you know, he's not saying, don't tell anyone about me being the son of God. Like, you know, keep this a secret. Um, you know, he, he also goes on and says, until the son of man is raised from the dead. This is in verse nine. And he, this is the second time that he is like explicitly saying, um, this is happening. He's calling his shot. So I told you there's going to be three of these. So that's number two. Um, so, okay, here's what I love about, about this transfiguration. Um, this is the second time that we are hearing God's voice. Um, God's voice saying the, the exact same thing. Behold, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. He said this um, really early on in Matthew. It was day six. It was um, chapter three. This is when Jesus was getting baptized. And, um, you know, the, the clouds open and the dove descended and, and, and God said the same exact thing. And there's so much symmetry to this, like, hmm, what is that about? So um, I'm going to suggest something to you. That first time was um, phase one of Jesus's ministry. Um, that's when we see God kicking things off and um, it's on. So now we kind of got to halftime and then we've got the second part, the second half. Um, it's another kickoff. God is saying the same exact thing. This is my son of whom I'm well pleased. And what a powerful statement. You know, let me tell you that um, that statement, while that is meant specifically and exclusively for Jesus, there's actually something that, that's in it for you. Can I read an, another verse? We're going to jump over to Matthew 8. Um, and of course I can read it. I can do whatever I want on this podcast. So mm. um, this is out of Romans 8. And uh, we're starting at verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we also may be glorified with him. Earlier in this section, he talks about a, having a spirit of adoption, not a spirit of fear. Um, man, <laughs> if it, it says here, like, if, if we are children of God, that literally makes us heirs with Jesus. Like, Jesus is our brother relationally, um, you know, when it comes to having a father and then having another son of, of God, Jesus, we're a son of God. We get to be heirs the same way Jesus is an heir. 
Think about that. That's crazy. It's mind blowing. Like, can you even believe it? Because I can't. Um, I, I want to believe it, but I can't believe it. It's it's unreal. Like, this is good news. Um, so, I, I just think that like, if God is saying this about his his one son, Jesus, man, I, I believe he he might just be saying this about you. Um, I said back in, on day six that it was such a joy to be able to baptize my son, Anderson. And I have this written on the board back here. Um, this is Anderson, my son, of whom I am well pleased. It was a joy to be able to say that about my son. Um, and I believe that God says that with just as much joy about you when you are his, when you accept that spirit of adoption. So, wow. <laughs> I've already run out of time. I do this every time. Um, it was real good today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue on with Matthew chapter 17. See you then.